from showing you how to get rid of this keyboard that takes forever to get it to one letter to the other, swapping it with this one instead, showing creative ways to watch two things at once, here are all the cool things you could do with the latest generation Apple TV. It doesn't have to be the latest generation, just so long as you're on the latest version of tvOS 26. And of course, timestamps will be in the below description down below for your pleasure. Let's start off by going over this new profile select screen. This is pretty cool, but a lot of people may find it kind of tedious because you always have to constantly click on it to sign in. You could disable this, especially if it's just one person that primarily uses the Apple TV around your household. So simply just select your profile and then just go into your settings. In the settings, go into profile and accounts. And where it says on the very top right here, where it says choose profile on the wake, just turn it off. And just make sure the default profile is selected and that will be the account that will always be automatically signed in. If you do decide on leaving this on, so long as you're signed into the correct profile, so back in this home page, if you quickly use the remote and you long hold on the TV icon above here, you can select your profile and sign into your correct profile right here. All the apps you sign in, as well as the apps you rearrange, will automatically be synchronized across your own profile. So if you long hold and you hit edit, you can rearrange the apps to your own personal preference and then it will be saved to that profile you, you have selected. So the little advantage right there. Now on the top portion of the screen right here, your status bar, this is where you'll see a bunch of your notifications as well. It's always important to pay attention to this because sometimes it'll tell you if your Wi-Fi is connected or not, or if your Apple TV remote is low on batteries like ours is. Now let's talk about understanding the physical buttons on your controller. A long hold on the TV icon, of course, will take you to your app switcher, control center, profile selection, or even your smart home settings. But a double tap, it'll take you to your app switcher. And from here, you go back to some of your previously open apps and a swipe up will cause it to automatically force close that app. So if there's an app that's acting buggy, you can force close it and reopen it that way. And then a double tap on the back arrow will take you to your home screensaver. And a single tap will take you back to your home page. But if you find yourself like inside like an app, like deep inside an app as an example, and you play like a movie. If you just quickly long hold, it'll automatically take you back to the default main menu. But now let's say for example, your Apple TV remote's acting buggy. It's not responding to your command. You can quickly reset the remote. To do this, simply long hold on the TV icon and then hold down on volume down and just keep doing that for about five seconds. And this will do like a soft reboot of the Apple TV remote, which should resolve any bugs, especially if your volume isn't responding. And it should say connected on top when everything's back and running normally. Now when typing something up when using the keyboard, this keyboard up here can be uh, very tedious because you have to do a lot to get, get to the other side. If you'd like to swap it with a better keyboard, just go into your Apple TV settings and simply click on general and then go into the keyboard and layout. By default, it will be selected on auto, select grid, now, if you ever notice you got to type something up, you have a traditional keyboard right here. Traditional layout, it's easier to get to one letter to the other much quicker. But of course, you may also be able to cl quickly click on the notification that may pop up on your Apple device. And you could type up anything you like to type up for your Apple TV on your device right there, so long as it's paired to the iCloud account. So like your iPad, your Apple Watch even, and your iPhone. But of course, you can always use the dictation button right here outside your remote for a quicker typing experience. And just real quick, guys, if you've been enjoying this information so far, if you could kindly take two seconds and hit that like button and like, those really do help out the channel because those allow the channel to be powered by you guys, the viewers, which is why you don't see brands taking like a minute or two off your time to me telling you to subscribe to like a VPN or something like that. Thanks to you guys, we don't need brands to power this channel. So big thank you to those that just took the time to simply hitting that like button and like really does mean a lot. Let's carry on. Now let's say you like to watch something, but also have another little mini display on the side of your screen, watching two things at once. It could be something you're personally watching and your spouse wants to watch something else or your kids as an example. So if we go into our Apple TV section as an example, and let's just start a quick video. Let's go ahead and play a movie. And now let's say we're watching something on our phone, right? 
go ahead and hit the cast icon, go into AirPlay, and select the Apple TV you like to pair with, right? Right now we're gonna hit replace, as it will replace the audio source. But then, if you look on the very bottom, you'll not only see the tool to enhance the audio, like the vocals and stuff like that, if you click on it, you could, pro you could easily do that using Apple Intelligence if your TV supports it, but there's this picture-in-picture -picture mode, which you could enable, and now you have the ability to watch two things at once. And then if you tap on the TV icon right here on your remote, you can swap the audio source, making that one into the full screen, or tap again to go back to the other video that you were watching. But if you tap on the TV icon one more time, you can move the corner if you like to move it left or right side, or you can close it all entirely. So definitely a cool tool if you like to watch two things at once. The next thing, if you like to use a VPN, don't forget the Apple TV fully does support a VPN. It's as easy as simply just launching the Apple App Store on the Apple TV. Type in VPN and just select the VPN provider you're currently using. You'll be surprised there's actually support for a lot of amazing third-party ones now, like main brand ones like NordVPN as an example, which should lock you the ability to watch other movies and stuff that's not available in your region to be watched on the Apple TV. Now with the latest version of tvOS, uh, Apple TV Plus is no longer Apple TV Plus. It's now been renamed to Apple TV. So I just wanna quickly update that and highlight that for you. But that's not what I wanna go ahead and show you because some of these glass icons, if you move the trackpad around ever so slightly, it does cause like a 3D effect, which is kind of cool. A little Easter egg right there, especially if you go over the arcade app as an example, you can move the joystick left to right ever so slightly. It's kind of cool, a little nice little bonus right there. But something I want to show you is if you're the individual who likes to watch something as you're falling asleep, but your partner doesn't like the brightness of your display being super bright, yes, you could lower the TV brightness itself, but with the Apple TV, you could also lower it even more. You see, if I triple tap on the back arrow icon on my Apple TV remote, I could dim the screen even more, making the screen even dimmer than what my TV will allow it to do. If you like to enable this tool to triple tap the back arrow, it's as easy as simply just going into your Apple TV settings, go into accessibility, and from here, scroll all the way down to the very bottom where you'll find general accessibility shortcut. From here, just make sure you select light sensitivity, but by simply just check marking light sensitivity, if you read on top, triple tap the click menu will enable any of these shortcuts you see here, but light sensitivity is what we have enabled. And now a triple tap with the back arrow will dim our screen even more. And then lastly, don't freak out if you lose your Apple TV remote or it's low on batteries, you just don't have time to charge it. If you have an iPhone or even an iPad as an example, if you bring out Control Center, you could add the remote shortcut right here. And if you don't see it, you could just add Control and then just type in remote right in here, add that, once you add it, you should be able to find it in your control center. From here, you can just tap on it. And then where it says choose TV, just select the Apple TV you're connected to. And all your familiar buttons will be located right here. We can actually navigate your Apple TV from here, pause and play. And even the shortcuts work too to open up App Switcher. And the volume rocker on your phone will allow you to adjust the audio of your Apple TV as well. And a long hold will allow you to power it off. Nice remote backup for those emergencies when you can't find your remote. But if you did misplace your remote, you can always select the Apple TV and you'll see a find remote icon. By selecting here, this will bring up this page which will allow you to find the remote a lot easier using the internal sensors. So you could definitely tell if you're getting closer or further away. It's only compatible with this style remote, unfortunately. But you'll find that you could buy this separately and the likelihood it's compatible on most Apple TVs are pretty high. So you'll also upgrade your Apple TV remote this way as well. But other than that, there you guys have it. Those are a handful of amazing tips and tricks that your Apple TV can do. Make sure to stick around because I do plan on doing a part two version of this video showing you more amazing tips and tricks that the Apple TV can do. But now if you own an Apple Watch and you like to find out what cool stuff this thing can do that's disabled by default, I also go ahead and show you a handful of amazing hidden features and tips and tricks that you could do with your smartwatch. It doesn't matter if it's the Ultra, Series 11, 7, or even the SE Apple Watch. So I definitely recommend clicking on this video over there so you learn more amazing stuff your Apple Watch can do. Thank you so much for watching.